grace and peace. May the Spirit of God Almighty, the God of Israel, give you ears to hear. May God's Spirit be upon you who are faithful and obedient in Jesus Christ. May the Spirit of the living God direct you when you hear his voice. In the, in the almighty name of Jesus, may the Spirit of God open your heart and mind to understanding, to wisdom and revelation knowledge. I'm Brother Joseph Herbert. I want to get on here and talk about the root who is Jesus Christ. The Word of God says in Revelation, I believe it's chapter 21, um, where it says he is the root and the offspring of David. It might be chapter 22, if I'm not mistaken. He is the root and the offspring of David. He is the bright and the morning star. So why does it say root? Because King David was chosen a man after God's own heart. He sought the face of God. He was chosen by the Lord, anointed by the prophet Samuel. And the children of Israel chosen a king. They wanted, they wanted, based on the desires of their heart, they wanted a king. God gave them a king out of his anger. And out of his anger... Uh, he gave the children of Israel what they wanted out of their own hearts, their idolatrous hearts, because they did not want God to be their king. And so Samuel communicated with the Lord, prayed to the Lord these things, these desires. The Lord gave them a king. And for two years, King Saul did well until he disobeyed. The Lord, the commandment of the Lord by God. It was also prophesied. So King Saul, he fell. And the children of Israel was, was idolatrous. And it was prophesied of them. It was prophesied that they were, were going to get this, this king. And yet the king that they have chosen, they were under him. But the king, King Saul, the first king of Israel, did wickedly in the eyes of the Lord based on the curses of his actions. God cursed him for the rest of his life on the planet. He had the Levites, uh, the Lord's priests, killed. He killed the, the priest of the Lord. He, he tried to kill David, the son of Jesse, whom God hath chosen. He has thrown a javelin at him and his son, Jonathan. And when the, his latter end, he put away all the witches and out of the land. But yet he sought a witch to conjure up the spirit of Samuel, the prophet. So the prophet Samuel is conjured up by witchcraft, by uh, sorcery, Saul sought a witch, and so he conjured up his spirit. What the, the prophet Samuel said, why have you disquieted me and have brought me up? Why did he say brought me up? Because he was in paradise, he was in Abraham's bosom, which was in the middle of the earth. Abraham's bosom was in the middle of the earth. This is well, way before Christ died on the cross. So, Jesus Christ is the root and the offspring of David. So after Saul's death, after he killed himself and fell on the sword, he died with his son. Um, his son died on the same day. And so... Now King David is reigning. He's the king of the all the 12 nations of Israel. He's the king of Israel. And so he's the second king. Just like Christ is the second am uh the second Adam. It's the second Adam. That's what it says and Paul by the Holy Ghost said that. So Jesus Christ is the focus. He is the example of whom we shall follow. So I was meditating in Romans chapter 11. I'm going to read this verse. 
So Paul, by the Holy Spirit of God, he says this in verse 16, chapter 11. It says, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. He says in another in, I believe it's first Corinthians or second, one of the two, uh, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So what that mean is you are a person who is holy and uh, around people they that want to be holy the impact or your attraction towards god you will attract others to follow you that you follow and you follow christ if you follow christ and people follow you that's the will of god but if you are like the world if you are like the ungodly they're gonna and you present yourself as a professed believer in Christ, and you do what they and you do what the world does, and you speak how they want to speak, you are going to be attractive. But hypocrisy is made known in the eyes of God. And you know, many times in Judges, you see in uh, Numbers, you see in the Kings, where it would say, "And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord." What was their evil? Idolatry, serving other gods. Worshipping Baal, worshipping Ashtaroth, worshipping other false gods. Likewise, in this new covenant, we are under the new covenant. Jesus Christ died and rose again on the third day with great power and glory. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father. So we're in the new covenant, yet idolatry still exists. What does it look like in the eyes of God and in the eyes of those who who are born again truly and have discernment, idolatry could be man. Idolatry can be the celebrity. Idolatry can be money, which is the root of all evil. Idolatry can be material or material gain, dishonest gain. That's idolatry. Coveting is a form of idolatry. You desire something that's not yours and you try to get it. It also, it, it can be the root of of theft because that's the eighth, the eighth commandment out of the ten commandments you should not steal the verse uh chap not chapter 13 i'm sorry uh the the 10th commandment is you shall not covet nor desires anyone's uh spouse just to paraphrase that yes coveting the law is on people's hearts we all know it's wrong to steal we all know it's wrong to lie. We all know it's wrong to dishonor those who are over us, dishonor parents, dishonor leaders in authority. We all know you feel it in your heart. Your mouth may not express it, but Jesus says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What comes, what comes out of your mouth, what's in your heart is who you are. And if you desire to be or Express what's in your heart. You are classified as a fool. And so, yes, I cannot say that so loosely. What is not really loosely, the truth is in the word of God. It says that in uh, Proverbs chapter 18. I forget which verse, but it also it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love is fruit will eat the fruit thereof. I don't know if I'm quoting that right, but that's Proverbs 18. I'm going to read the rest of the, uh, chapter 11, but I want to I want to go there real fast because I want to quote. I don't like misquoting verses, but in this body, as I grow in the necessary edification of Jesus Christ and the Father, he is perfecting me every day. He's perfecting his people. We are to go on to perfection. So it says this in Proverbs chapter 18. It says, yes, death and verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So you in your heart, you speak there, out of the abundance of the mouths, out of the mouth, the hearts, the oh my goodness, Lord, Holy Ghost. Let me slow down because I I get excited when I talk about the doctrine of the Lord. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart is who you are. The word of God says, as in water, face answers to face. So a man's heart to man. 
Again, what's in your heart is who you are. The heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. This is, is this is talking about those who are not, don't have faith in God. Don't obey God Almighty. And we're in the new, the new covenant. Those who do not obey Jesus Christ, those who do not obey the Lord, their heart will be, they express their heart. Their actions is idolatry or idolatrous. Their actions are adultery. Their actions are fornications and murder, hatred, and the list goes on. So, the Christian's heart is changed every day. The Holy Ghost convicts our heart whenever we step out of line in the will of God. You don't want to be out of the will of God. For the truly born again Christian, you do not want to be out of the will of God. How do you know that you are out of the will of God is when... You are, you're, the Spirit of God is pressing on you and you're bothered by life circumstances. You're bothered by the pressing of God's Spirit on you, convicting you. Jesus says the Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, is to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That measure of conviction is also for the sons of God. So, convicting the word of sin we hate we're supposed to hate sin we're supposed to hate pride and arrogancy the evil way in the forward mouth we hate that because god hates that sin righteousness we are to be convicted of righteousness that we did not do if we didn't if we don't do righteousness every day the spirit of god will convict us and judgment judgment why judgment Judgment is also can be def defined as discretion. We as sons of God are to judge rightly. We are to judge rightly. You have the book of Judges. God sends deliverers. God sends deliverers to fulfill the will of God in that time. Yes, God sent deliverers and Israel, the children of Israel, gets delivered from a circumstance or a troubling situation and when the deliverer dies the children of israel go back into sin that's it was what is the word called fluctuation is fluctuating uh between decisions you decide to follow the lord you, you decide to follow one who is appointed by god until the shepherd is smitten, the sheep scatter. When the sheep scatter, then what do you depend on? You have the Lord, but yes, people don't follow the Lord. People don't obey truth and righteousness in God Almighty and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why you have the fluctuation of when the children of Israel sinned before God, they went back into serving other gods and, Id and idols, and then until the Lord sends a deliverer, and then they obey the Lord again. So, again, at one point in uh, Judges, yes, it was in Judges, I forget what chapter, but it came to a point that the Lord was pretty much, uh, I don't want to use that this word, but fed up that the Lord start uh, went and said, I'm paraphrasing when I say this, go serve your guys, let let them let them deliver you out of this situation. And it said it would say they cry after God the more. And then God is who is merciful. He delivered them. So it was, it was a back and forth. The mercies of God are like the heavens above the earth. So are the mercies of God to them that fear him. To them that fear him. So you are... And is in this new testament, in this new covenant that we are under because of Christ. Again, Christ is the new covenant. He's the new testament. We are to obey him in truth and in spirit. He you are created to worship him in spirit and in truth. Now his word is spirit and his life. And so we are quickened by his spirit. When I say we, I'm talking about the truly born again. We are quickened by his spirit. He stirs up, he stirs us up when we seek him. We, he stirs us up when we worship him. And so 
Jesus Christ is the center for the Christian. For the Christian, because he is the head of man. And yes, we are made in his image and after his likeness. So yes, yeah, so I'm back to Romans chapter 11, verses. I'm going to read this again, verse 16. I didn't read the whole verse, but here it is right here. Verse 16, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. If the root be holy, so are the branches. What? How would you define holy? Holy meaning separated from what the world does. Holy meaning being separated with the world and how they think, their mindsets, and what they say and do. Yes, being separated from the world. Separate to what? Separate to God Almighty and the Lord Jesus Christ. God is holy and he also commanded his people to be holy for the Lord. Your God is holy to be perfect for our father in heaven is perfect. Again, I made mention of this. Uh, I was at work the other day and I was just working. Uh, I work in a warehouse and so... I was in one of the aisles in the warehouse and I overheard this one guy, he's a professed believer. He was talking to some young man, some some young guy. Um, and I guess the young guy said something to the degree that it described or expressed how young he is according to what he had said. It And the professed believer was like, oh man, see, this is a man's world. This you ever heard of James Brown? This is a man's world. And when I heard that, I'm like, no, that's pride. That's not this is not a man's world. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And it says that in Psalms chapter 24, verse 1. So Psalm 24, verse 1, with that's like half the verse. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and everyone therein. So I went and showed the professed believer that. I didn't rebuke him out of uh, out of shame, but he. I let the spirit of God shame him with the word. I didn't meaning I didn't go to him and let everybody know, hey, he's wrong. He's he's no, that's not the truth. So I pulled him to the side and showed him the scripture, Psalms twenty four verse one. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof, the world and everything, everyone therein. He read it slowly and instantly he got convicted of what that said. And I told him, see, this is what that says. This is what the word of God says. You said that this uh, singer, R&B singer, who is dead now, who is in hell. He didn't die in righteousness. He's in hell. He said, this is a man's world. And he is wrong. He, he made a song. Everybody was singing. And when you're singing to someone who is ungodly or singing their lyrics, you are in idolatry. He said, this is a man's world out of pride. It, it, it expressed pride. And he, I, I was telling him, that's it's not, a, it's not a man's world. This is God's world. If you are a son, if you are a son of God, if you're truly born again as a Christian, he is our father. The man that died and sung that song, he called himself the Godfather of Soul. And that's very blasphemous. Only God is the Father as Christians. I'm going to put emphasis on that. When you're a Christian, God is our Father. God is your Father if you're a Christian. If you're not born again, you can't call him your Father because he, you're none of his. He's God to you. That's all that there is. And he's gonna, his wrath is on the children of disobedience. So the person calls himself the Godfather of Soul. He made some other ungodly songs. I don't want to even name them, but he said, This is a man's world, and that is a lie. That's a lie. I showed I was telling him that. He he received it. He received the rebuke. Um I, I wanted to point point the verse to him as. This is what God's word said. If you are a professed believer, this is what it says. Not to what that man says or anybody else who is not, who is of the world would say. So yeah, show them the truth. So 
what is what am I saying? What's my point? My point is a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So he, the, the individual, he said, and this is true. This is a man. It's a man's world. That's that's false doctrine. That's not true. So if the if he go ahead and says that to everybody else as a professed believer, he and makes believers out of that, that he just leavened the whole lump. He has spoken lies. He's spoken falsely. And lying lips is an abomination to the Lord. That's the word of God. Lying lips is an abomination to the Lord. And you will be held accountable for that. But to show him truth, now he's deaf. If you don't apply that to his heart and mind of Psalm 24 verse 1. And continues on telling people that it's a man's world. When... The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yes, he will be held accountable for his thoughts and the Lord will bring to his remembrance while he's on the planet. Or if he dies in that condition, believing that that lie, the Lord's going to bring to his remembrance. Remembrance. Remember my son told you and showed you my my word and what it says in Psalms 24 verse one. He's going to be held accountable. He's going to be judged. That's the will of God. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, and there are more to be desired than gold, yea, than fine gold, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, is your servant warned in keeping of them, there is great reward. That's what it says in Psalm 19. So, I'm going to read this again. This is Romans chapter 11, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. So you, I, you know, if you watch my videos often, you will hear me quote John chapter fifteen, brother Joseph's favorite, one of his, one of his favorites. I'm not gonna say favorite. I don't have a favorite. I have favorites in the Word of God. John chapter fifteen, Jesus says, "I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman." <clears throat> Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, or meaning he purges that it may bring forth more fruit. You, as a true born-again Christian, are to bring forth fruit. Meaning your works by faith before God, it ought to resemble what Christ did on the planet. It ought to resemble the works of Jesus Christ Believing that everything he has said that will happen for those who follow Jesus Christ, they will manifest even greater works than what he has done. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one calls to the Father but by me. That's what he said. So, to believe on Jesus Christ, you are to be holy as he is holy. What, what makes you holy? To seek him every day. He wants to sanctify you. He wants to impart glory and power and the willingness to obey his voice when he speaks, when he, you read his word and when you worship him. And you have three components of the Christian that is truly born again. Prayer, supplication. That I, I count that as one. Uh, worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. That's two. And meditating on his word. You have these components. And you need leadership. I'm not adding that as four. But you need leadership. That's when the congregation. The healthy church comes into play. You need leadership. You need authority. One that God can appoint over you. So that you can obey his voice. So that you can learn of Jesus Christ. Through your pastor. You're not created to. Have church by yourself. You can't call it a church. It's not in scripture. You won't find this in scripture that you are the church. No, it's not in scripture. You will not find it. If you can, please show me where it's at. Uh, you can inbox me. You can inbox me and say, Brother Joseph, I found the scripture. And if you found it, then I guess you are the expert of the Holy Ghost. So you don't want to you don't want to be in error. You're not made to be in error. The spirit of error is on so many people. 
First John talks about that. And so, again, I'm going to read this verse again. For if the first fruits, this is Romans chapter 11, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. You are a branch to bear fruit. The, the root is Jesus Christ. Revelation, and I forget where it's at. I believe it's in Isaiah as well. It describes Christ as the root and the offspring of David. So David had sure mercies of God. And the sure mercies of, of David was on King Solomon, the third king of Israel. He was, he, he was commanded to build the temple of God. And he has done so. He, he was wise. He had godly wisdom and he had his own natural wisdom. So the root and the offspring of Jesse was through the lineage, through the, if you read the uh, genealogies. Now, I would encourage you not to spend all of your time on the genealogies because it is not, what's the word I'm looking for? It is not, it doesn't lead to the gospel uh, to salvation is only Christ. Christ, his testimony, which is the spirit of prophecy. You as a son of God are to preach it. Your conversations are to be with necessary edification. Meaning, you are your tongue should be wholesome in the eyes of God because we're supposed to fear God. He's watching. The word of God says, the Lord's eyes beholds the evil and the good. So he's watching. Everything records. The angels, the holy angels, God's holy angels are recording everything, every day, everyone. Everyone has angels. Demons are fallen angels as well. So the, the fallen angels are ready to accuse you of your sin. They, if you are in the world, they're not going to say anything. You're just doing what you want to do. You're being recorded and you will be held accountable for everything that you have done, said, or thought of. Nothing hidden before God's holy eyes. All things are naked and open before the Lord. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 4. So I want, it's something else that stood out to me in the Ecclesiastes that Solomon said. Um, it's in chapter 7. Mm, where's it at? Yes, verse 25. So it says this. Now, before I read this, you know, you know and understand that to be classified as a fool in this life, it dis, it is highly grievous in the eyes of God. The word of God says, let a man meet a bear robbed of her whelps rather than a fool in his folly. The word folly can be defined as one who lacks wisdom, lacks understanding. Uh, lacks uh, knowledge and foresight. That's folly. That's how you can define folly. Folly leads to foolishness. Folly is is a root is the root component of foolishness or fool. So yes, five wise, five were foolish. The five foolish were not prepared to meet the bridegroom. The five wise are prepared. They had oil full in their lamps. They were ready. You, as a true born-again Christian, are to be like the five wise, not the five foolish. The foolish, they built their foundation on sand-like ground. And they try to build it. When the rains come and the winds blow and the, and the floods beat on that house, it will fall. Great will be the fall thereof. Not for the wise. Those who hear the sayings of Jesus Christ and God the Father, those that follow Christ, the foundations is found and solidified on the rock. When the rains come, tribulations, everything, adversity, when the rains come and the rains descend and the floods beat on that house, it's not going to fall. Not, you're, are like, you are like a pillar in God's kingdom, in the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So in this body, you are to obey and be holy. You boast in the Lord. 
You boast not in arrogancy, but in joyful righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. You boast in the Lord. So yes, Ecclesiastes 7, I'm going to read verse, uh, verse 25. The preacher says this, I like, uh, and it's something to consider, something to uh, contemplate. He said, I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly. Folly is defined as one who lacks understanding and foresight, even foolishness and madness. So this was the error of King Solomon. He's He has repented because... When you read Ecclesiastes, you can tell he's much older and you can tell that he realized all the years of being king of Israel that his flaws, everything that he has done, it was vanity, meaning it was unprofitable, it was worthless, it was vexation of spirit, it was grasping for the wind. It led to nothing, it angered because it was a waste of time. Yes, he was the wisest man to ever live. Um, Jesus Christ is the wisest man, but apart from Christ, King Solomon, he was also the richest. So he had wisdom to make decisions. He was so wise, yet because he's man, he's in the fallen nature, he decided to try not just wisdom, but foolishness. So you have the mixture of Wisdom and folly. Wisdom and folly do not go together. Wisdom and foolishness do not go together. You can eat a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch with Dr. Pepper. It doesn't go together. Wisdom and folly do not mix. Yes. And I I don't want to give you a example like that, but you know, you can't mix wisdom and folly. So that was the problem. Of Solomon when God gave him wisdom to build the temple it was a time of peace that's what was prophesied uh, by Nathan the prophet Nathan the prophet told King David Solomon's father that he has the sure mercies of David his mer the Lord's mercy will not be removed from David just like it was removed from the first king of Israel he gave Israel a king out of his wrath, out of his anger, and he he smitten him out of his wrath. That's what the word of God says. So be careful what you ask and how you behave yourself in this life as a Christian. Yes, you have mercy, you have grace, but shall you continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. You don't want to be a compromised Christian. You don't want to be a lukewarm Christian. No, God on the day of judgment will spew you out of his mouth, meaning he will reject you on the day of judgment. You you said you was a Christian. You said you served me. You say you worshiped me, but you did these things over here that was not pleasing in my sight. <laughs> Matthew 7 sums that up. Matthew 7, 21 sums that up. And Scariest words in all existence. Not people, not many professed believers would want to quote that. But this is truth. This is seriousness. It should bring urgency to and, and prompt you to obey the voice of the Lord. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will say on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name done wonderful works and in your name cast out devils? Then I will declare to you, depart from me. I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness, you who work iniquity. Iniquity is your continual work of evil in your actions, continual thinking of evil in your minds that you don't pull down. You are responsible in this body to control your thoughts. And evil continual speaking with with uh, rashness, speaking 
idle words. Jesus Christ says men will give an account of every idle word in the day of judgment. Every idle word, meaning every careless word, all blasphemy, all gossip and slander, all things that offend. Yes, you are to be holy. If the root is holy, the branches are to be holy. We just went over there in Romans in chapter 11. So yes, so Solomon, uh, because again, God gave him wisdom in a dream. He was already wise because of his father, David. But God gave him wisdom because, excuse me, King Solomon asked how to lead so great a people, the, the children of Israel, how to lead. He needed, he needed an understanding heart. And the request pleased the Lord. The Lord gave him an understanding heart to lead God's people. And it pleased him so well that the Lord gave him riches and honor because he did not ask for the life of his enemies. He did not ask of uh, everything that the heart, the deceitful heart of man would ask for. The same pleased the Lord in a dream. Yes, God can answer you and appear and manifest in a dream because he controls everything. So you may think your dreams and your mind, your thoughts is just imaginary. It is imaginary, but the dreams that you that are when God manifests in a dream is him is really him. Please understand and know that there's so many dreams that I've been victorious of. I'm not going to share it right now, um, but just know that the name of Jesus Christ is is power in his name, even in your dreams. So the Lord appeared to Solomon and gave him an understanding of heart to lead the children of Israel. He gave him wisdom. And the word of God says in 1 Kings, I believe it's chapter 4 or 5, that it says he, he, num he understood the trees he, and insects. I'm paraphrasing when I try to remember that. If I go to it and I and it it was I will explain that. But that's he had wisdom. So that's that's what I'm trying to describe here. He had wisdom to manifest the righteousness of God through his decisions to lead God's people. And so I'm gonna read this again. This is Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse twenty-five. And he is Solomon is reflecting what kind of person he is and was in this life. Um, well, he was, not is, because he's reflecting, he's documenting what is being taught here. He's a preacher. He's preaching this doctrine. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom. So in today's time, Yes, the Christian will have adversity and be oppressed by unbelievers, be confronted by wicked people who have false doctrine, who serve other gods. They you're gonna have people that said they're gonna that's gonna say, do your own research. Yes, I've been told that before. And it's such a vain response. Research what? And if I research, what's it going to benefit me of? It's going to benefit me nothing. So, yes, what happens when you do research? If you are truly born again, King Solomon made it clear. This is what happens. He said, I apply my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. So, so you, this is why we focus on Jesus. We focus on Jesus. We stay meditating on his word day and night. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in season. And his leaf will not wither and whatsoever he does, he prospers. That's the will of God for man's life. We stay focused. God brings forth stability for the children of, uh, for his children. I'm, I was going to say children of Israel, but we're not in the Old Testament. We're sons of God. 
So, yes, do your own research. That's what they say. That's what they that's their defense because their lifestyle, their lifestyle behind closed behind closed doors, God knows, and it's gonna be revealed. What's in man's heart is who they are. They tell you to do your own research to get knowledge. To get knowledge. You saw what happened to Eve, who gave her her husband, and then Adam, he bit from the fruit. Of the knowledge of good and evil. And there's the fall of man. Man ate it. The, the whole entire universe fell. Yes. Why is it the whole entire universe? Because man was created for to have dominion. God gave man a help meet. To do his will. Not everybody knows the will of God. What is the will of God? If I was to ask a person. Who professes to be a Christian, and you see their lifestyle, excuse me, you see a life, their lifestyle is carnal, meaning secular, meaning worldly. And you, if I was to ask them, do you pray? And they say yes. If I was to ask them, does God hear your prayers? I would say 70% of the time they would say yes. How do you know God will hear your prayers? By him answering? According to his righteousness? Or according to your righteousness that is self-willed? And I have to be as at the level of my anointing in the eyes of God, who he has given me this. I have to be stern but loving and truthful. My, my face is to be as a flint, to be serious because the kingdom of God is serious. This life is to be taken serious. This life is not to be taken lightly to live carefree. No, that's not the will of God. Does God hear your prayers? The blind man that was healed by Jesus, John chapter 9, verse 31 he said, he told the Pharisees, now that we know that God does not hear sinners, but he who does his will and is a worshiper of God. Many people, again, I make mention of, do not know the will of God. They, they search the scriptures, but in them, they think they have eternal life. They don't even know what eternal life is because they're governed by time. Yes, they're governed by time. What do, I, what do you mean by that, Brother Joseph? You're governed by time because the earth rotates around the sun. 24, hour, 24 hours a day. The earth rotates around the sun. While we're on the planet, we're looking, and it looks like the sun is going down And again every day. No, the earth rotates, and I'm not trying to be scientific here. The earth rotates around the sun. So you have 24 hours to get right with God for the rest of your life. Now, how great is that? Is Things are greater than that because the Lord is from everlasting according to Psalms 147, if I'm not mistaken. The Lord is from everlasting, meaning he's eternal. The son was with the father in the beginning He's always existed. That's why he's, he says, I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. Have no other gods before me. Time can be your God. Why? Because people are taking thought or worrying about, I don't have time to seek God. I got time to go do my laundry and take care of my kids. I don't got time to go to church. I need to go to work. I don't have time to do this and that. You're governed by time. Why not be governed by eternity that Jesus Christ, who gives life everlasting to man so that we trust in him, so that you can trust in God. You don't trust in God. Eternity, the other kind of the other category of eternity is waiting on you when you die. That's eternal damnation. Yes. People 
Hebrews, I forget what chapter, I think it's chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, if I'm not mistaken, it says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. God is holy. God is true and just. And he must punish sin. He's done so on the cross 2,000 years ago. Innocent blood was shed. Innocent and perfect blood in Christ. Sinless blood in Christ was shed. His life was given as a ransom for many. Please understand. Respect the fact that you have decisions in this life. You don't respect the fact that means you care nothing for holiness and righteousness. You don't love Jesus. You compromise. You care more of your family members more than the living God. You care more for the saying of blood is thicker than water more than the living God. You care for things. You care for your job, your job more than the living God. Some people who go to church, go to church just Sunday. I'm not being disrespectful when I say this. Some people go to church just on Sunday and Wednesdays. I've been to churches like that. Me, myself, that's not enough. It may be according to the will of God for other believers' life. That may be so for them. Me, it wasn't enough. I needed more. There was a substitution of where I what I needed because of the two days out of the week of church. I needed Jesus every day. Jesus is every day for the for the Christian. You look at the disciples and the apostles when Jesus was when Jesus was on the planet, Jesus every day, church every day, worshiping Jesus Christ every day. Sunday is not going to do it. Just Sunday alone. Just Wednesday alone, two days out of the week, it's not going to do it. How, how, what is your oil level? When I say that, I'm talking about the anointing of God on your life. What level is on the Christian who goes to church just Sunday and Wednesday? Where, where is, examine yourself to see that you are in the faith. Where is your oil level? Why do I make mention of oil? Because five were wise and five were foolish. Psalms, I think that's Psalm 50, 50 or 52. It says, I am like a green olive tree in the house of my God. You get your oil through worship and praise. You get your oil from the Lord Jesus Christ in his presence you get your oil by meditating on the word day and night so that you can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also will not wither and whatsoever he does, he will prosper. Guess what? The ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff, meaning they're like sea coverings that the wind drives away. The ungodly will not stand in the judgment or the congregation of the righteous. No, they will not stand. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly will perish. So that's Psalms chapter 1. What is the will of God for your life? The will of God is to obey Jesus. Seek him every day. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all of his righteousness. So that all these things will be added. All what things? All the blessings, all the prosperity that God gives, not for your own pleasure, but for his pleasure because you're serving him. You live for Jesus Christ. You live for him. He should be your life and the length of your days. What does that mean, Brother Joseph? You love the Lord. Your actions are going to show it. Your obedience to God is going to show. And God blesses the righteous. Psalms chapter 2, let me turn it real fast. Not Psalms, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 2, the end of Proverbs chapter 2 says this. Let me turn it real fast. So, the will of God, it says, verse 21, it says, For the upright shall dwell in the land, but the perfect shall remain in it. Let me read that carefully 
so it don't bypass you so it don't go one, go through one ear and out the other out the other so for the upright God made man upright upright meaning righteous for the righteous or the upright shall dwell in the land this is prophetic right here and the perfect shall remain in it meaning the righteous the sons of God will dwell in the land will dwell the meek will inherit the earth Jesus Christ said that the meek those who are slow to anger swift to hear and slow to speak knowing that the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God the wicked will be cut off the perfect will remain in it and in verse 22 it says but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressor shall be rooted out of it so it's giving you division here righteous and wicked sheep and goats wise and foolish righteous unrighteous good evil you make that choice what si whom do you serve choose this day whom you will serve because christ is holy Jesus is the door. Jesus is that straight gate. Enter through the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many go in there at. Meaning everybody loves with the world that is not a Christ. Everyone loves unrighteousness. Everybody loves the fornication, the adultery, the drunkenness, the club scene, the cigarettes, the black and mouse, the marijuana so on and so forth. They love unrighteousness. They love darkness. Into the straight gate. For wide is the gate brought us away that leads to life. Few that be that find it. Straight is the gate. Jesus Christ is that straight gate that you enter in so that you can be made righteous. Difficult leads to life. Straight and narrow leads to life. Jesus Christ leads to life. Few that be that find it. Are you the few that found it is my question. This message is for. To encourage you. To choose Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and your Redeemer. And when you choose him, obey. Worship, praise him, meditate on his word, endure to the end. Jesus Christ says he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. That's the doctrine of the Father through the words of Jesus Christ. Because he obeyed the Father in perfection. He said, my meat is to do the will of the Father who have sent me. Choose this day whom you will serve. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all men. For God will bring everything with every secret work into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Those are the last words of King Solomon in Ecclesiastes. So, Jesus Christ is the true vine. The father is the husband man. Another translation, it would say the father is the vine dresser. Same thing. Um, but I do st stick to the King James Version, even though some other translations that I don't read, what I used to read, I don't read no more. So, King James Version is the one I love reading here. So, John chapter 15, I'm go here. And so, he describes himself as the true vine. The father is the husband man. Excuse me. He says, every branch that does not bring forth fruit he takes away and every branch that bear, that bears fruit he purges that it may bring forth more fruit and then he says now you he's speaking to the believer he's speaking to his disciples and the reader that has faith in him he says now you are clean through the word that i have spoken to you when jesus christ speaks power is transmitted there is power cleansing through the vessel of God who are the chosen vessels Jesus says you did not choose me but I chose you and ordained you that you should bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that wherever you ask the father in my name you he may give it to you he says 
In verse 4, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Meaning you can't do nothing in this life without Jesus Christ. According to righteousness, you can't do nothing without Jesus Christ. Jesus is righteous. The Lord is righteous. If I, he says, if you, let me see, verse 4, I'm still in verse 4. If you abide in me and Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except the, it abide in the, in the vine. So I quote this so much. I quote this so much that I need to read it often in ministering. So I like to explain as I go. Verse 4, John chapter 15. He said, abide, Jesus Christ, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. So he's explaining, he's telling you that you can't do nothing in Jesus without Jesus. You can't do nothing. I'm sorry. Rephrase. You can't do nothing without Jesus Christ. Apart from Christ in this life. To go through life, you can be successful, but what would that success lead to? Destruction. Mean your meaning your heart is set on things. Colossians three, chapter three, verses two, I believe. It's Paul by the Holy Ghost says, Set your affections on the things above and not on the things of this earth. Meaning, don't set your heart and mind on material. And earthly things. Jesus tells Nicodemus, if I have told you heavenly things, no, if I have told you earthly things that you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? The doctrine of Christ, the Christian who ministers the word of God and meditates on it day and night, this is heavenly things because the books are open, things are written to people, and you have choices to make in this life. Will you be holy as God is holy? Because God is holy. He's Paul, the very first verse in Romans chapter 1, says, he says, I am separated to the gospel. I'm separated. I'm holy to the gospel. Because the gospel is the testimony of Jesus Christ. The gospel, the glad tidings of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. That's what it says in Revelation 19. Revelation 19 says the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So the, so the gospel is prophetic. How is it prophetic? Because men make the decisions to cleave to Christ and believe and obey. Believe that the Father has risen Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. On the third day, he defeated sin and death, destroyed the works of the devil, he was seen of angels. He revealed himself to his disciples on the planet for 40 days. Then he ascends back into heaven. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again. Behold, he comes in clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they that pierced him, all kindreds of the earth, will well because of him. Even so, amen. He's coming again. Are you ready? Will you be ready? Will you be prepared? Will you be like the five wise virgins or the five foolish? Are you prepared to meet the bridegroom? I'm Brother Joseph Herbert. This is for his glory.